Hello everyone, this is Rashida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on gradient boosting machine classifier. In my last video, I gave a detailed explanation or detailed intuition behind gradient boosting machine. I explained how it works and we also worked on a regression example. Today, I will show you a classification example in gradient boosting machine. Uh, if you haven't watched my last video, please feel free to go back and watch that. I have the link in the description box below. Let's dive into today's video. Today, we are using heart disease data set. And you see the data set. We have BMI, smoking, alcohol, drinking, stroke, physical strength, uh, sorry, physical health, mental health. Okay, all these kinds of health parameters. And we have the heart disease. And this heart disease is going to be our target variable today. This has yes or no value. You see, this is the size of the data set. The value counts of no values is much larger than the value counts of yes value. So the data set is quite skewed. So we'll see how the gradient boosting machine works on this skewed data set. And here I am checking for the null values. And you can see that we have no null values at all. In each column, we have zero null values. And here, I'm taking a fraction of the data frame for today's example. I'm taking 30% of the data. The reason is I tried with this, the whole data frame, but it takes a really long time to train uh, the model. So I had to go back, stop the training, and I just took a small sample of 30%, which is also not too small. We have 95,900 data, so almost 10,000, you can say. Okay, now let's focus on some data processing. You see, we have a lot of categorical variable in the data frame, right? We need to convert all of them to numeric variable. Uh, now we see so with so many columns, instead of doing one by one i just want to do it programmatically like this so here what i am doing i'm looping through the number of columns we have i'm going to looping through all of them except for our uh, target variable so whenever we see a data type of a column is object that is going to be converted to the numeric variable okay after doing that here our data set looks like all of them got converted. Next, let's define our target variable and training features. As I mentioned, the heart disease is going to be our target variable. So from the DF, if we just exclude or drop heart disease, the rest of the variable we will have as training features. And DF dot heart disease, that is our label. And here is the X, the training feature. You can see it starts from BMI and it takes the rest of the data frame. Here I'm using the train test split method from scikit-learn library to split the data set into training and testing data. So we are keeping 20% of the data for testing purpose. Random state of nine, you can use any other integer of your choice. So data processing is done. Let's dive into the model. To begin with, we need to import gradient boosting classifier from scikit-learn.ensemble. Then I called gradient boosting classifier method and saved it in CLF, this variable. And then finally, just feeding the training data through the CLF, the gradient boosting classifier. That's all for model training. So I'm not using any parameters here. I'm not passing any parameters. That means I'm accepting all the default parameters. So after training, well, we should check the accuracy score. This is a classification problem. So the model testing can be done with accuracy score. For the test data, we have 91.5% accuracy. And for the training data, we have 91.6% accuracy. So you can see we don't have any overfitting at all, right? which is the good news. Now, because this is a classification problem and we saw how skewed the data set is, I would always check the confusion matrix. I checked the confusion matrix for the test data only. Uh, we had to just find out the prediction, the prediction for the test data for the te using the X test. And for the confusion matrix, you have to 
has the true label that is y test and the predicted label that is y pred. Here I just saved it in the y pred. Here you can see we have 95 false positive and this is false negative. So we have 17,435 true negative and 1,500 false negative. So this ratio is pretty small, right? But in this side, we have 95 of false positive and 134 true positive. So here ratio is pretty high, right? There is a lot of scope to improve it. In false negative side also, even if we are seeing that uh, the ratio is very small, but still this is a good number, 1524, right? Especially health data. You have to keep trying to improve as much as you can. You have to keep false positive and false negatives as low as possible. So you will try to improve. So here I'm trying some parameters, learning rate of 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.05. If you're not familiar with the concept of learning rate, please watch my last video. I explained the intuition of gradient boosting machine. Uh, I explained why we use learning rate and what learning rate is, how it is used. Uh, so please feel free to watch that. And we are also using max depth of 3, 4, and 5. So because we want to try this many parameters, we need to use the grid search CV method. And it takes first the classifier itself, the model itself. So the model is gradient boosting machine. Here I already saved it. Okay, so GBM and the parameters that I'm passing the parameters. We need to feed the training data to the model. So that's all. And just a warning, if you run this model, it will take quite a good amount of time, much longer than what you have seen here when we didn't pass any parameters. And so you really have to be patient uh, to see some results. Let's check the score. The accuracy is 91.5 on test data and 91.6% on training data. So it's very close, hardly any overfitting. But if you look at the percentage, it's pretty much the same as before, right? So let's check the best parameters. So we passed learning rate of these three values and the best parameter was 0 0.1 and max depth of 3. Again, I'm checking the confusion matrix. You can see the confusion matrix. Here, false positive is 96, even a little more than before. And this side here, false negative, it's exactly as before. So what we can do? We can just try more. So here I'm trying again. I am adding n estimators, a new parameter. I'm putting 90 and 100. 100 is usually default. So I'm just adding one more to try. And I'm also adding mean sample sleeve, where one is default. I'm also adding three to it to see if that improves our model. And using the grid search CV method, I'm passing the gradient boosting classifier loop. I'm calling it again, and then passing the parameters, and then feeding X train and Y train, the training data to the classifier. See, we have pretty much same 91.5% and 91.6% accuracy again. So the overall accuracy didn't change, but let's see what happened to our confusion matrix. And see, this time we improved the false positive. Instead of 94 on 95, this time it's 87. Uh, some good improvement there, right? And you see the best parameters we got learning rate 0 0.1 as we saw before and max depth of 3. That's also we have seen in our last model. Max depth of 3 here, you can see that. But mean sample sleeve, that's 1. 1 was better and n estimators 90. That was our model. I will stop here. Please feel free to keep playing with it. Let's try out some more parameters. So here is the documentation, gradient boosting classifier. If you want to try some different parameters, I tried the pretty much some important ones. Try out some more important parameters, try out more values, different values. As we can see, an estimator's 90 was better than 100. So maybe next time we'll try 
95 and 85 and see what happens. Max depth of 3, 4, and 5. I passed and then we got the best parameters, max depth of 3. So feel free to try max depth of 2 as well. Or if you want to try different parameters, if you feel like any other parameters can be good, you try that and see uh, if you can get better results. If you want, please feel free to share your result and your best parameters in the comment box below. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for watching.